Hey everyone, welcome to the Jace Jungle full gameplay tutorial. Before we start, let's first talk about his items and runes. Currently, this is the ideal standard setup and feel free to use this as your guide. For better understanding, I will explain the reason on why this is my build. Going to the items, the first item I would go for is Yumu's Ghost Blade as this is one of the best armor penetration items that you could get as a jungler because not only does it have a lot of damage, it also makes you a lot faster which in turn makes your ganks better. Then we go for the Black Cleaver. Really good on Jace because you have a lot of skills to proc the cleaver stacks as well as it makes you a bit more tanky and increases your ability haste even further. Then the next item that you would go for is Ionian Stasis. Ionian Boots for the ability haste as well as a stasis when you go in or get caught in a bad position, you have a way to survive. Next item we go with the Serial Just Grudge. This is really good on Jace because not only do you get even more armor penetration, you also get a slow on your pokes which is really good once you get into the later stages of the game wherein you would be able to half the HP of a carry in one poke or at least one fourth. Next item, we go a bit defensive, Guardian Angel, just in case we get into a bad position where the Elder is spawning or you want to try to burst someone, you have your Guardian Angel for second life. Last item for me is Death's Dance because this helps you regain your HP back. Once you go into melee form and burst someone, you would be a lot tankier as well as have a bit more damage. Going to the runes, the first rune that we'll go for is Conqueror. Since Jace has a lot of skills, you could easily proc Conqueror on your combos and it's very efficient on this champion. Then we go for Gathering Storm. I want to go for a bit more scaling on his kit so your poke will be even stronger once it gets to the later stage of the game. But another alternative could be Brutal if you want your early game to be a bit better since Jace's burst early is strong as well. Then we go for the Hunter Titan, gives us HP and if they have a lot of crowd control, we're able to escape them. But another alternative would be the Nullifying Orb since we're building AD, then this would be good for us and might win us some duels when it comes to the clutch situations. Then the last room that we would go for is Mana Flow Ban, the reason of which is that since we're not building Mana Mune, we would be having mana problems the longer the game goes. So this allows you to not be reliant on blue buff all the time and gives you mana even though you don't have any mana items. So that is it for my items and runes and I will see you guys in game. Going to the game, this world teaches tips and tricks, do's and don'ts, and advantages and disadvantages of Jace Jungle. In this matchup, we are currently up against Vi, and in a Jace vs Vi matchup, it is pretty much even with both champions with their own specializations. So Jace specializes on poking and bursting the opponent, while Vi specializes on initiation, crowd control, and tanking the enemy team. So here I do the level 1 control ward trick, switch to a control ward, ward one side of the map, immediately recall, and put back the yellow trinket. So what this does is that it gives us vision on where the posing jungler might be. The clear that I'm doing here is the red side clear, where I clear my red, krugs, raptors, then flex depending on where the scuttle will be and the priority of the lanes. So when clearing as Jace, you'd always want to maximize the hammer form rather than using the range form because the hammer form not only makes you a bit more tankier, it also gives attack speed which would make your clears faster. So you'd always you only want to use the range form or the cannon form when you want to use the skills. So usually you'd, what you would want to do is cannon form uh, you, uh, first, third, second and then switch to your hammer form for the rest of the clear. So here I am um, clearing my Krugs. Riven was able to first blood the Jax which is good. Even though our Ezreal disconnected, it's nice that we have priority in the bot side so most likely I'll be playing there. So here as example, I use range form for second then switch to our hammer form for the burst and clear. So what I do is, the build that I do here is max first and then second rather than first third because third doesn't do a lot as compared to the second skill which gives a lot more damage and has a lot uh, better scaling than maxing my third. So now that the scuttle is up, I see that Vi is on the top side. She has a bit of faster clear than me. So I would know where she would be and I would just adju adjust accordingly. So I don't have prior in the top side, so I just go for the bot side instead. So I clear the scuttle. My early game is not that strong yet. My damage would most likely spike once I'm able to complete the ghost blade and the cleaver. 
So I see that the Jax is playing aggressive in the bot side. I go for my cannon form. Burst, burst the Jax down. Flash in and get another kill on the Jax. Which is really good for us. Because we don't want Jax to be scaling well in the game. Because Jax, uh, basically looking at the comps. They have a strong scaling composition with Vayne, Kale, and Jax. And if any of them are able to get their items, it would be very hard for us. So similar to clearing, when you want to gank, you always want to start with a cannon form. Go with the first, third combination. And then second, then switch to your hammer form and do the burst. So your, the second skill of the cannon form uh, synergizes well with your hammer form. So as you could see, whenever I use my second skill, I would always switch to my hammer form which is the melee to be able to burst the camps and make my clear a lot faster so i look on the top side there might be a possible gank they chose to go back so i go back to my drop instead so i've already cleared my top side most likely at either gank top or just recall and go back bot i see that riven is being chased by two members and she's able to escape which is good for us now i look for a possible gank on the top side I, since they are junglers on the bot side, I know that there's no one at the top side. I do some poke with my cannon form. I see that they're low. There's a cannon, uh, there's a control ward in the side. But even though they see where I am, I know that vice at the bot side. If you look at the minimap, so no one would be able to help their duo bot. I do another poke. Brom does a great job tanking the tower and good crowd control. And we're able to get a 2 for 1 exchange. Not the cleanest, but it's still a good advantage for us. Because not only do we get 2 kills, we also deny the wave of the opponent. So unfortunate that our cannon got solo killed by Kale. But now they're trying to to punish the Vi for overstaying. And this looks looking good for us. Because we really need a good early game. So that we don't want them to be able to scale properly. So now that the second caps are up, so another trick about Jace is that you don't need to do third first. What's better if you do first third? That way, your uh, shock blast will be less predictable and it will be faster. So you always do first third rather than third first. Your third skill is uh, you could easily just use the uh, auto target and be able to cast it easily in while the wild reform so kill i'm able to you poke him down poke her down with the cannon form then finish her off with the hammer form i see another potential gank go with the cannon form via is able to ult me go with the hammer form poke a bit so with jace you always want to use abuse your cooldowns because you have six skills which are all very strong and it's something that you would want to utilize when playing jace so now that the objectives are up, instead of going down, I know that they're all, all low. So I opt to go for the dragon instead. <laughs> I missed my shock blast there, but it's okay. It happens sometimes. So go back to our hammer form to clear the dragon. I see that they're going bot side. Most likely they're going for the trade. So once I slay the dragon, I need to go back and uh, buy my item. So now that I have ghost blade plus boots, my move speed will be pretty fast. I would be able to go there as fast as possible luckily they they reset the rift herald they're not in position so i just want to clear my camps instead before going to the rift herald so before going for the herald always want to use our control ward to remove any possible wards so they will be afraid to face check i'm pretty confident that i could start the herald because i see that their duo bot is on the top side and i I'd want to clear this i want to take this as fast as possible before the duo bot comes. Uh, Kenan secures the uh, Herald. I use my third skill to disengage a bit. I have my cannon form for the poke. We're able to get a lot of kills and we win the team fight. So the only time you would want to use the cannon form to auto attack is when you don't think that you could all in. So the only time you would want to go hammer form in a team fight is when if you want if you could burst someone 100 to 0 or you know that you're gonna win the team fight but when when uh going hammer form is a bit scary in a team fight because if you're not able to burst your target uh jace is kind of squishy so here another poke Kenan gets a great stun and this shows goes to show the power of jace 
wherein not only could he burst the target down, he also has strong poke. And the key important thing about Jace is that you need to get a lead early so that your poke would be a lot more effective. So Jace's best use if the opponents don't have much sustain, such as Nami, Sona, so that your poke would be very strong. So even though they have a Senna kill, their heal is not that strong, so they wouldn't be able to out-sustain our poke. So now that I clear my top side, we're able to get a lot of kills, currently 6-0. I see that Vayne is trying to farm the top side. I try to look for a pick-off. Now that I have a lot of bursts in my kit to be able to bur burst them down, uh, Vi goes in for the counter gank, so I had to play safe a bit. There they might come, Ezreal is able to help me, I, and I clear the camp instead. So at this point, I think I already have my black lever, and this I'll, I'll show you how strong Jace's poke could possibly be, especially where in this situation. But before that, always want to clear your camps as much as possible. Uh, Jace's best power spike comes at 3 items once you're able to complete the Serial Just Grudge. So another alternative to the Grudge is the Mortal Reminder if they have a lot of healing. But in this game, we're snowballed and generally Grudge is a much better pick. So uh, I'll just leave the anti-healing to my teammates instead. So I see the Kale trying to farm the bot, trying to scale a bit. I go for the poke. I miss my combo, but it's okay. Riven is able to help me once Kale's ult is down. We immediately burst the Kale. I see that there are two people trying to gank the Riven. Now three. I poke them a bit. Look at my burst. Look how strong my damage on the Senna is. I'm almost able to one-shot. We take down the Senna. I switch back to our cannon farm to play a bit safe since we're low. I have another poke. Cannon does a great gank on the bot side and we get another good trade. So the reason why we're snowballing this game is because they don't have any early game champions. So they all want to scale and... We're not giving them the the possibility to scale in the game because their late game is way better than ours. Because our only late game is most probably just Ezreal and Riven. And then the others will most, most probably will outscale us. So when you want to snowball a game, you would always want to invade the enemy jungle and try to take their camps to deny their jungler's farm. And to force their jungler to take the lane farm, which in turn denies their the farm of their carries. So the, what the opponent is doing is they're trying to split push and try to get as much farm as possible because they know that they need to scale. So once I go back, I buy for my Ionian Stasis, which is good just in case Vi ults me or it could be help uh, for outplaying the opponent. Especially once I go in with the hammer form, once I throw my combo down, I could use Stasis to buy time while waiting for my cooldowns. So Jack is able to take down a tower, but the three of us are here and to try to punish the Jax. I use my cannon form, once I use all of the skills, switch to my hammer form, and get the kill. So Herald is spawning in 5 seconds, perfect timing. I see that there are 2 members mid, I go for my cannon form again, try to get a poke off, I miss it, but I have a lot of damage, even with my hammer form, I'm able to burst the Senna down. Another fight in the top side, uh, in behind the blue buff. We have a lot of burst in our kit, and we're really ahead in the game right now. So Herald is up. So what we would just want to do here is to avoid throwing and try to punish the opponents as much as possible. Possibly leading them to surrender or to just finish the game as soon as possible. So now objectives are up. I don't need to play a bit greedy. I see that there's a fight in the mid. So instead of going for the objective, I would want to burst the Jax. My poke is really strong. I'm able to... One hit the Jax from 1 fourth HP. I think my poke does 500 damage per shot. And it's very good. Especially if the opponents don't have much sustain in their team. So once I take the cloud, I have my grudge. So this is my the maximum power spike of my poke. Next item, I would go a bit defensive with a Guardian Angel and Death's Dance. It would still provide a bit of damage, but not as much as my power spike right now. So before going for any place, I would want to clear my own jungle so that I don't waste, uh, so that the camps would spawn while I am probably pushing. Then I look for another lane to possibly gank. I see that there's a fight mid, so I try to help my team. Kennen does an ulti. I have my cannon form. I poke the Vi a bit. She's a bit low. I try to look for the Senna, but she had her shroud up. We force the flash, which is good. And I'm looking for another poke. Look at my damage. With a grudge, half HP vein, 
Jax tries to force a fight onto me, but he doesn't know that my team is right behind me, so we immediately punish the Jax. And then I have my combo again. I miss the snipe, but it's okay. I have a lot of damage, so I use my cannon form for the poke and to play a bit safe. Now that my Coco is up again, 1 HP, at least 500 damage for the kill ulti as well, which is really good. And then I use my cannon form to poke the opponents down, then go for the hammer form for the burst. Unfortunately, Bane flashed, but it's okay. So you always want to play around your cooldowns on which form has cooldowns down. Boom! We burst the KL with one hit, Ezreal Q plus my poke. Then I switch back to my hammer form since my cannon uh, skills are on cooldown. Another engage happens, I'm low HP, but I'm pretty confident that I could still help my team. I still have a lot of spells, I still have my stasis, flash, and smite. So we uh, go back instead, we don't want to give any unnecessary kills because I have 1.1k bounty right now. And it's not good if I give it to the opponent. So I, wouldn't, I don't want to give them any chance for a comeback. So usually at this point, uh, what happens in solo queue is that people play, are, play very, very greedy. And then they die for it, and then the opponents will would be able to come back because they have a better scaling up. So I, that's the number one thing that I want to prevent when playing solo queue. So it's okay if your opponents, uh, if your your teammates die, just don't uh, die yourself, especially since you have a big bounty. So we're looking to start a Baron because their jungler's at the top. So I look to fight instead. I burst the Jax even with ulti. Senna tries to help, but we take her down also, and then Vayne. Tries to kite, Ezreal's pretty strong right now. I tried to pull Kale, but she had ulti. Then I wait for the ulti to come out. I have my hammer form, which can go through obstacles if in range. And we win another team fight, which is good. So four of them are down. There's a huge wave in the mid side, and this will this is where we will most probably finish the game. Vi is the only one up. So the Nexus protection is now dug gone. The opponent surrendered. We're able to take down the Nexus. Oh, actually, they surrendered, and it's a great victory pose for Jace with the Q stasis. So, this is a great game for Jace, and hopefully, I was able to show you how to play the champion efficiently. We're able to get 99.48%, which is almost 100. Get MVP. Looking at the stats 14 0 10, perfect KDA with almost the most damage dealt. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the game and I will see you guys next time. Before I go, there are three tips I would like to share with you when playing jungle Jace. The first is when to use him. Jace is best used if there's a tank on your team and the opponents have no sustain. This way, you would be able to utilize his kit by poking and at the same time, your team would still have a front line. My second tip is his skill combos. To maximize your cooldowns, always start with a ranged form. Use all of the skills, then switch to melee for the burst damage. If the opponent is still alive, switch back to your ranged form and by this time, the skills will be off cooldown and you would have another burst combo. My third tip is when to engage. Always utilize the cannon form for poking and only go into the hammer form when you know you could burst someone in a teamfight. And that is it. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe in order to see more content. Feel free to leave a comment if I missed anything and what champion you would like to see next. Thanks for watching. Ciao, ciao.